Bob Costas saying that there are, we need caution uh, and in concussions. Bob Costas is also saying, we've got a grip on this. No. Bob Costas is saying everything is going to be all right. Uh, absolutely because not. they're letting me say this. Absolutely not. You're, you're, you're inferring that, and that inference makes no sense to me. Let, me. let me be as clear as I can possibly be. I like football to the extent that I like it, mm -hmm. and baseball is my favorite sport. But I like football to the extent that I like it, despite its violence, not because of it. Mm -hmm. If you could somehow create a game where every tackle would simply stop the ball carrier, mm -hmm. but never even, even sustain a scrape. I think it's result. called flag football. No, no, but you did, you did, flag football then would, would reduce the, the level of difficulty in stopping the mm -hmm. runner. It's, but if you could remove the violence and brutality from the game somehow, I would enjoy it more, all right? I think, as I said to Goodell on the air, mm -hmm. I said, what do you say to the parents of an athletically gifted 13-year-old boy who tell you that they've been football fans their entire life, season ticket holders, never miss a Super Bowl, but knowing what we now know, we will not allow our son to play football. How could you possibly argue against their position? I think Goodell realizes that that makes a lot of sense. There's a limit to what he can acknowledge, and in his position, he's trying to do the best he can, both for humane reasons, the safety of the players, but also because he realizes his league faces liability mm -hmm. issues. Um, a lot of lawyers will tell you that the concept of willing assumption of risk indemnifies the league against these claims. But even as we speak, 12 former players have filed suit just this week claiming that um, the league soft peddled its own knowledge of the dangers of concussions and gave them drugs that sent them back onto the field and put them at further risk. Um, you know, so, so he's, he's, in, he's in that position. But let me make my position clear. I think that the violence and the level of violence in the National Football League and its celebration by parts of the media, I mean, up until recently, ESPN used to have a feature called He Got Jacked Up. Mm -hmm. And they had their, their commentators, some of them career announcers, some of them former players, chortling like drunken frat boys, he got jacked up. And then they would say, well, of course, none of the people uh, featured in these plays was seriously hurt. But the only difference between those plays and plays that result in catastrophic injuries, including paralysis, is luck and happenstance. And when you have a game where players celebrate, they don't celebrate good plays and clean tackles that Amos Alonzo Stagg would have taught. They, they celebrate the hit that blows the opponent up. And they stand over him, and they celebrate it. Except when that guy doesn't get up, all right, then this ritual plays out. A hush falls over the stadium. Players from both hands, from both teams, join hands. Then they place the guy on a gurney. More often than not, as he leaves, he's able to give a thumbs up, and everyone applauds, including if he's a visiting player. The announcer then somberly says, well, that really puts it all in perspective. And that perspective is maintained for about two plays. And then we go right back onto the same thing, all right? The game is unacceptably brutal. Can I say it any more clearly than that? It is unacceptably brutal. <laughs>